Our first contributor talk of uh, this afternoon session will be given by Melrose Roderick from Brown, and it's titled Deep Abstract Q Networks. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Owen Broderick. I'm an undergrad at Brown University working with uh, Stephanie Talitz. And I'm going to be talking about Deep Abstract Q Networks, which is our method to improve um, performance of deep Q networks on long horizon domain. Um, so, for a bit of motivation, we've uh, seen deep Q networks perform amazingly well on these high dimensional domains. And specifically, uh, deep Q networks have outperformed previous methods and um, uh, even humans on these short horizon uh, domains such as Pong, Breakout, and Space Invaders. Um, but these DP numbers struggle on these longer horizon domains such as Montezuma's Revenge and Venture. And we care about these domains because they're the closest analogs to real world robotics domains. So how do we fix this? Um, there have been several methods to uh, try to improve the uh, performance on these long horizon domains. And one example of this is intrinsic motivation, um, which tries to motivate the agent to explore unknown areas of state space, such as Belmer's uh, work on pseudo counts. And um, this method uh, explores more rooms in Montezuma and revenge than uh, any other method. And, but it, it doesn't seem to plan like a human. And um, for example, it will opt to, uh, it, it, it can't backtrack, so it can't retrace its steps, or it doesn't learn to do this, and instead learns to jump to its death to uh, return to the starting location, as seen in this video. Um, and so this doesn't seem to be exactly what we want from our agent. Uh, there's also been incredible uh, perform uh, results from hierarchical methods, um, which use a low and high level uh, deep Q learner operating at different time scales. And these have shown uh, incredible uh, performance on Montezuma's Revenge and other domains like this. Uh, but they can't uh, explore as far as uh, the intrinsic motivation results. And they also, since they're using uh, model-free methods at the high level, they can't um, replan their high-level policy very quickly. On the other hand, model-based methods such as RMAX have shown really impressive results on these low-dimensional um, discrete uh, state spaces such as uh, uh, the taxi problem. But we haven't seen any results that, uh, for extensions of RMAX and other method, other model-based methods on these uh, high-dimensional continuous domains. So our approach tries to combine the uh, combine the long horizon benefits of model-based reinforcement learning with the high-dimensional benefits of uh, deep reinforcement learning. And to do this, we provide an abstraction function to our agent, um, and then we learn a model-based uh, plan over these high-level abstract states. And each of these abstract states uh, corresponds to a transition between um, two, two different abstract states. Sorry, each of the actions in this high-level state space corresponds to a transition between two high-level states, which is learned by a deep Q learner. And these deep Q learners are operating on the base-level environment. And now these uh, deep Q learners run until uh, they Run into a uh, or run into a new high level state, whether this is the correct or incorrect one, and then our L, uh, we pop out of our L zero environment and back to our uh, model based learner. And we're only providing the abstraction to the agent, so we're expecting the agent to learn the high level hierarchy, as in what uh, high level states are connected, the low level policies um, to transition between these high level states, and the high level policy itself, and. The benefits this provides is it uh, shortens the long-term horizon of uh, sorry shortens the low-level shortens the horizon of the low-level learners. Um, it guides high-level exploration in our case using RMAX at the high level, and it can quickly change its high-level policy because it's a model-based method. And to uh, test our uh, our algorithm, we constructed a simplified version of Montezuma's Revenge. Uh, the map of it is shown here. Uh, this uh, domain has the same high-level policy as Montezuma's Revenge, and the same uh, mapping of the rooms. You have to collect the keys to unlock the doors, to transition all the way to the goal at the bottom left there, um, all while avoiding these uh, deadly traps. The main difference between uh, this domain and Montezuma's Revenge is that each of the rooms in this domain is a simplified 11 by 11 grid. Um, 
and it doesn't have the complex traps of monosurface revenge, such as the disappearing walls and bridges. And the abstraction we provide to our agent is uh, the current room it's in, the uh, uh, state of the doors and keys, and we also provide a finer division of each of the rooms, which we call sectors, um, and are denoted in these colors. And uh, we gave it these sectors so that a uh, random policy can more easily transition between these high-level states without dying. So how many rooms does our uh, algorithm explore on, on this domain? And for a bit of comparison, um, the deep key network and intrinsic motivation methods only explore one room as shown in green on the right there. But um, the, the reason intrinsic motivation can't get out of this first room is what we talked about earlier, where it struggles with uh, backtracking. And since we only provide one life to the agent in this domain, um, it can't get out of the first room. Um, if we provide uh, lives to the agent, the intrinsic motivation still can only explore five rooms in this example domain. Um, but our method, on the other hand, is not only able to get out of the first room, it can also learn the high-level policy of collecting two more keys and making the, uh, learning the high-level plan of uh, transitioning all the way to the end of the game. Um, we also tested on the Atari uh, domain. So here we have the average test reward for over 50 million training frames for three different Atari games. Um, our method is in blue here, and we, uh, the double decom baseline is in purple. Uh, I'll note here that we tried to replicate the results of Belmare's intrinsic motivation and failed to do so. Um, unfortunately, he couldn't provide us with the uh, source code, but he did kindly provide us with the uh, raw data he got from his results. Uh, we also contacted another university, uh, Seoul National University, uh, who is the only other paper we found in the literature to try to replicate these results, and they also struggled similarly to us. Um, so to talk about these results, uh, we struggle greatly in Montezuma's Revenge because of these timing-based traps that, um, but since we're using a random exploration at the low level, this random exploration uh, fails to cross these timing-based traps. If we change the Montezuma's Revenge domain so that it um, ends after only a single life, we perform much better than intrinsic motivation because this forces the agent to backtrack, which our uh, method can do quite well. In Venture, we start learning a good policy and uh, then forget it, and we think the reason for this is that as our um, agent explores further, we uh, it stops training the decoms associated with the exploitation policy and thus uh, forgets them. Um, in summary, uh, we presented this uh, method that combines deep reinforcement learning with model-based methods, and the benefits are it shortens low-level horizons, it guides the high-level exploration with RMAX, and it uh, learns uh, to exploit robust policies. Um, in future work, we hope to combine the uh, intrinsic motivation with our low-level learner to um, improve exploration at the low level. And one uh, drawback to our approach is we have to provide this hand annotated abstraction, and in future work, we uh, hope to learn that. Thank you.